Well, we've got a stunning picture to show you now of that capsized cruise liner on the Tuscan coast. Take a look. The newly released satellite image was taken from 500 kilometers above the Earth. It's now been five days since the ship slammed into a reef, killing at least 11 people. 21 people are still unaccounted for. This as the underwater search was called off again after the ship shifted again. So how will the ship itself be recovered? Chris Brown looks at that one for us tonight. Chris. Well, looking at that cruise ship now, Peter, it's hard to believe it could ever be salvaged, much less sail again. But you know, there is a Canadian example that suggests it may not be so far-fetched. Hope for any of the missing under the waves near Giglio must surely be exhausted. But again today, Italian rescuers vowed not to give up. We will only stop when we are sure that no one is left inside, he said. The narrative, though, has clearly shifted from survival to salvage, and rarely, if ever, has the world's marine industry seen a job like this. Leaving the vessel there in the middle of a protected area just isn't an option. Chris Gardner, a former deep-sea diver who's pulled the dead out of sunken oil rigs, now teaches marine safety. If they can patch it, um, they could refloat it. That'd be one option. The speculation has sprouted countless theories on the internet. This one animated by a company in Taiwan. Once patched up, it's suggesting giant balloons could refloat the Costa Concordia. It's technically doable, says Mark McAllister, a BC naval designer and ship salvager, but he has his doubts. It'll be a nice trick if they can pull it off, but I don't know whether it's going to be worthwhile. It may turn into a demolition job. On the other hand, there's the example of the Sundancer. In 1984, the cruise liner hit rocks north of Vancouver Island and limped into port in Campbell River before sinking. It was later salvaged, dried out, and put back into service. It went under its own power to a dock in Campbell River and then sank alongside the dock in an upright position. So it would have been a far easier salvage job to get it to float. Back in Giglio, the priority is emptying the liner's giant fuel tanks. The actions of the captain continue to draw criticism and amazement. His latest explanation for leaving the sinking ship before it was fully evacuated was that he tripped and fell into a lifeboat. Incredibly, the story of the Sundancer also has an Italian angle. As I mentioned, it was put back into service and ended up as a cruise liner in Italy. In the 1991, Peter, it sank again. Chris Brown in Vancouver tonight. Thanks, Chris.